Hey, welcome back to another exciting episode. Hmm. Hey, welcome to Hale Design Technologies. My name is Jeremiah, and I am building my own fabrication shop here in my garage, building all my own hardware, uh, everything from the ground up, learning as I go. So um, let's jump right into it. Today, I'm trying to figure out problems with the printer. Um, it's one of the largest form factor printers out there that I know. Um, it also doubles as a plasma cutter. I got a few issues I need to solve. Uh, one with getting a bed leveling sequence working. I need to get my VL touch to actually give me signal feedback. So um, I can see it turn on and off, but it won't give me any data. So I need to figure that part out. I need to set some software. I need to figure out feeds and speeds in the printer's firmware to get the bed leveling sequence done and printing at a reasonable speed. So I'm fine tuning as far as the printer calibration goes. Um, I, was do, I was doing pretty good, but I was also printing a rectangle when I should have been printing a square. So I gotta get that solved. I have it running at 1100 millimeters by 1100 millimeters, but the bed is actually larger than that and so are the um, actuators. So I'm just taking it slow. I figured 1.1 meters would be enough. Also, I need to figure out some way to filter the water uh, because I've got um, a rust problem with the steel bars that I put in there for plasma cutting. Um, I need them to be replaceable and cheap. So I'm using steel. Steel and water don't mix, so I need to come up with another solution or just filter out the uh, particulates in the water. So I need to get that going. I got a few tips from some very helpful uh, commenters what I can do about the rust buildup and possible solutions. So I'm gonna try a few of those and see what works. And yeah, so thanks for joining me. Hopefully we'll get a big prank going today. I don't know. The firmware checks out. I don't see any issues with the firmware. Um, older versions of this firmware, you used, you used to have to do this, which was define the servo angle. Angle, wow. D define the server an servo angles. That's a weird word, is it? Word, that is just a weird sentence. Um, and also define what, um, what pin the servo should be using, or what out of, there's usually like three or four different servo ports on the board. So we're going to use starting at base zero. So that's technically number one servo. And uh, you used to have to do that for older versions, but now all the research that I've done, it should be automatically enabled when you uncomment define BL touch. Um, I actually added that servo zero pin 11. Um, if it's already set, then it's no harm, no foul. So you can define it again if you want to. Um, I just defined it again because I'm trying to figure out why this is not working. So let's uh, run this to the board after all those changes that I made. All right, I found what the problem was. Um, I had my pin in backwards and my label was actually wrong. Um, so, oops. So all I had to do is swap the, the pin around 90 degrees and now everything's just fine. I knew it was something simple. All right, so here's the probe sensing. So it's up position now, down position, up position. Yay! It's working! Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm going to uh, change out the water because uh, it's really high, really highly contaminated with rust particles. Um, so I'm gonna get rid of that, uh, change it out with a fresh batch of water and figure out why my heating element over here is not working. So I ran it for approximately two hours to try to get the water to heat up and it didn't change one, um, it didn't change one degree as far as my temperature was sensing and also um, I was checking my elements back here to make sure they were on and functioning and yeah, it was it was hot I my like, place my hand on the back of this heating element back here. And it was nice and toasty. So it was heating the water, but Not enough 
for I guess the cubic size of this water. I suppose I could run it for three, four, five, six hours to get it to heat up, kind of like a jacuzzi or uh, uh, something, but I'm impatient. Three hours is not going to cut it for me. So I need to work on my heating solution and I'm running this on one coil and it looks like I'm going to need to go to two coils to get this thing uh, nice and toasty in my time frame that I want to print by. So that's the next step. So drain it um, and hook up the second coil. Yeah, no, the tape dropped the wrong way. Should be right though. I've done it before. No vice grips. Yeah, here comes the fun part. Let me move you to a better angle. Time to spill rusty water all over there. So how do you like being under the water tank right now? Okay, so I chose this system because it'll plug right into a regular garden hose. And any other type of hose. This connector right here is probably the most common connector in all of plumbing. So, and all I do is turn on the drain and it drains right down through the water hose. Cool, now I can get the whole tank ready. And the water's draining right out. And man, that's gonna be nasty in there. So, pretty cool. So right now it's draining out of both sides. <clears throat> I'm an equal opportunity drainer. Check this nastiness out. Ew. Gotta get this taken care of, cleaned out, and figure out a way for it to not come back. Ends up all right. Let's get all the rust out. Check out these nasty things. That was about after a month of sitting in there. It's an Aerosmith. Oh wait. Um, whole house sediment filter at five micron particle filter in here that should do uh, To get all the particulates out of the water. This was one of the original comments that I got uh, from you guys saying that I should employ a filter and I heartily agree you got Cardboard You got the fancy fancy filter itself. Ooh, looks pretty and you got a mount and you got instructions and another um, le leverage for your uh, that's cool and that's it okay so Warning, electrical shock hazard. Interesting. From what? What about this is electrical shock? Uh, prior to installing on metallic plumbing, uh, securely install two ground clamps. Interesting. So they don't want you to shock yourself. Guess that happened to somebody, so now it's a warning label. All right, so should be good. I'm not even gonna open it. Looks good to me. And that's why I went with the twice as expensive clear one, so I could see in there. 
got a it's got a bypass valve. Man, that is some tight turning. Do you have to oh depress? No? So you can turn it either way, it looks like from the symbols on the top. So it's on to filter, off, bypass, and it's the same on the other side. So you turn it. Technically, you can turn this thing either way, and I see why you need a need one of these bad boys. Man, that's got some English on it. Hopefully, that wasn't out of frame for y'all. Okay, so um, let's get this installed, and you know what installing new plumbing. Uh, equipment means adapter. Yay! I think the adapters cost more than the device itself. All right. Mounts for this bad boy. Um, oh, I have options on the left and options on the right. Um, this is the intake, and obviously that's where I want to mount the filter before any nasty stuff gets to my sensitive equipment. So I kind of want the filter here. So my problem is if I put it there, I can go here, put the filter in, move it over there. Uh, but that means my pump is a suction pump and I'll get mounted somewhere over here. And it's got to then pull all the water through the filter, through this thing and into the tank. So I just don't think my little pump has it in it. I really don't. Um, I wish I could say it did, but it's a little little 12 volt thing and it doesn't quite put out that much suction to move it over. And what it's going to do is get starved uh, for water flow, start cavitating. Uh, that means air bubbles will start forming in the turbine and then all bad news bears from there. So I need to move my pump from here to here. So it's ahead of the filter and flow and stuff. So it has a fighting chance of not getting cavitation um, or getting starved for water. So let's figure that out, uh, which means I'll need to move this thing again. And if you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you know I've moved it twice already. So um, measure once, cut twice. Good news, everyone. I won't have to move it after all. I think I'll just move my pump instead and move it to this little leg over here. And then most of the plumbing will be located in this back corner. So that'll be good. So cool. Sorry if you're stuck looking in the back of my head. Too easy. Yeah, look at this. Wow, you moron. So terrible. So I need some space. I mean, can I save it by flipping this bracket? Heck yeah, it's gonna be flipped then. I am so terrible. So it'll sit right in here and then what it's basically held in by the hoses the one thing i forgot to check and um they did put it on the label here for cold water use only well we're gonna have to see i hopefully that's just a contamination with the water not the filter getting destroyed in there but i'm gonna run it on hot water anyway and find out Cause I'm crazy like that. Okay, spared you the dirt, dirty details, but all dressed up in their new Sunday suits again. Ready to put the, uh, ready to mount them as I mounted to the, the bracket over there. So let's move over there. All right, so this is what I was talking about. So it's gonna mount in like that cause these don't fit all the way through there. And it's a pretty tight tolerances in here. So, Let's play not drop the expensive filter. Yeah. 
Yeah. The pump has got to sit in this, between this inlet and this intake here, sort of a force feed rather than a pull feed um, suction. But, there you go. An odd placement, I admit, but it'll do the job. Move the pump, Jeremiah. That'll be easier, Jeremiah. Oh, I'm hopeless. That was way harder than moving one of these. It's because I had to get up underneath there. I ended up mounting it directly behind the heater here. But, she's all wired in. I'll have to try to manage this a bit as best I can. Because I can't have it sticking out past the edge of the table. Because there ain't no clearance over there. Right now it just barely sticks out, so we'll make it work. So I've got a couple options when it comes to my rust inhibitor. Um, I can put some stuff in the water, um, which I plan on doing, uh, but still finding something that's not gonna like have some adverse effects of plasma cutting. Um, and then uh, the topic of electrostatic plating um, AKA galvanation, uh, got a very helpful video done by, uh, commoner Dr. Purple. Um, check him out down there in the video description that uh, see that video. Um, and, uh, walks you through how to do a, uh, at home galvanation process with some zinc. Uh, thankful for that video, but I'm not going to exactly follow his advice. Uh, one, because I'm lazy. And two, uh, because I want to try an experiment. Um, I like the idea of galvanization, which covers up the metal, keeps it rust free. Um, uh, but I'm going to cheat. Dur -dur -dur -dur. Superior corrosion resistance. I've never actually used this stuff. And uh, my experiment is trying it out, seeing what happens. So I'm going to do a little test run. I'm going to do half of this in um, protection. And the other half I'm gonna leave bare. And then I'm gonna shove this whole thing in a thing of water, leave it in there a couple days, and then we'll come back and see what happens. Sounds like a good experiment to me. Okay, so we'll just leave this in here. All, all submerged and like. And we'll see what the coated side does versus the non-coated side. And I imagine in a couple days that non coated size is going to look pretty nasty, and just like the water tank has been. And we'll see what happens over here. This is what I really care about. So, a uh, good little test. Let's try her out. Ew. All right, so the results, uh, slight discoloration underneath there on this side. So it does look like it's getting through and then it's actually rusting, but the rust prevention over that time lapse you just saw or about to see uh, is about 30 hours. So. Uh, the time lapse over about 30 hours of rust occurring on this piece. And I'd say this coating's actually doing a good job. We'll give this coating a shot. That's about five bucks a can, so pretty darn cheap. Alright, some of these are too long, you can pull them off and cut them. Okay, shortened them all up by about an inch and a half on most of them. That little um, carbide tipped 
chop saw works like this stuff was pine wood, chops right through it like butter. I'll link in the description for that guy. So I decided to replace my uh, tape that I had around the edge here for a more permanent solution. I hope it works. I'm currently gluing um, a weather stripping for a garage door around the edge of the tank. And then when the bed comes, what did it come? When the bed gets placed in here, it'll push the lip over and form a seal. At least that's the idea in my head. We'll see how well it actually works. Okay, I'm gonna try to fill her up now with a new with a new coating on the bars as well as I'm gonna add some treatment to the water, some rust inhibitors, corrosion protection, and uh, see how my pump does with the filter. So let's fill this bad boy up. A fun little trick. If your garden hose is coming out a little too strong, just wrap a rag around it. That's enough for now. Let's fire up the old uh, heating sequence, shall we? So I'm uh, sorry about the shaky handheld footage, uh, but my um, glue didn't hold, um, which was surprising to me that it came, uh, that it didn't adhere to the rubber, but it adhered to the stainless. So. That's what I was most worried about detaching was actually from the stainless, not the rubber. So uh, a little bit confused. So I think I'm gonna need something with an epoxy base um, rather than whatever the heck this is. Uh, that will adhere to the rubber a lot better, um, which might be a blessing in disguise that this actually didn't adhere because the epoxy base, I guarantee you'll just suck right into this. Um, so. Uh, for the rest of this 16 footer. Buy more clamps guys. You'll need them. Okay, Gorilla Glue much better. It's already holding up way better than the other stuff did. So cool. Got that glued in and time to fill it up again and throw the top on. Oh, that's heavy. Well, this is my solution for putting in some rust guard in there, um, anti-corrosion. So I've got a, um, I got a bottle of concentrate. Man, I'm shaking all over the place. So I got a bottle of concentrate antifreeze that you would normally just shove in your car engine. Uh, but now I'm gonna use its uh, corrosion guard um, and um, good heating and cooling capabilities. Uh, thank you. Press stone for all the chemical engineering. Um, and I'm just gonna use it to take care of some of my rust problems in here. This won't solve everything, but it'll slow down the rust process. Plus it looks super cool. Oh, that does look cool. One gallon, 3.78 liters. Notice how it's like clear over here and greener over there. Um, this is where the pump dumps in to the bed. Uh, it, goes, it goes way back there in the corner and right here. So uh, fresh water is getting pumped in here, but it'll start to turn green um, and guess, as it gets fully mixed. I think I might pick up another gallon. What do you guys think? Another gallon?
if you can see this, uh, that was another print that I did. Um, so that's the base of it. So it, so I took it past the uh, comfortable point for the polypropylene. Um, so the, the layer of primer is supposed to help protect that uh, and become a nice adhesive layer because it's very porous. Um, that's the idea of a primer is it connects the two surfaces together, the substrate that you're painting and the paint itself. So the primer just sort of acts as the middleman. I'm just using Rust-Oleum, I, I believe. Uh, now it looks even more like a hockey rink. I wanted to show you I installed an exhaust fan um, and that'll tie right into this gap here in the rubber seal around the bed. So uh, most of the steam outlet of the bed will come out right here and this guy will suck it up and push it right out the window. Okay, so I've got a lot done. Uh, thanks for joining me and watching my uh, shenanigans on this printer build. I've uh, solved a few problems, caused a few more problems. So I'll have to get those worked out. And a few things just didn't work for the things that I've tried so far. Um, super happy with the rust protection that, I've, that I'm using. A uh, combination between antifreeze and, and a spray on zinc galvanation process. So that's keeping my rust down. I've, I've got a filter installed. I've worked out my heating issue with the heater. It, on a test, it took about an hour to get up to temp. I'm okay with that. I've installed a um, rubber seal around the edge. It's basically what you stick on the bottom of a garage door um, to have it seal against the weather. Uh, it's gonna be nice and um, sturdy material and uh, not, not seep out all the stuff around the edges. What I mean by stuff is the steam and the water gets up to temperature. And then I installed an exhaust fan in the back so it'll pull all the steam out the one area where I didn't install the rubber gasket. There's a gap about that big in the back side over there. That will allow the steam to escape and not build up pressure inside underneath the print bed causing bubbles and warps and stuff. No, bad news. Um, so those are my successes, but what are my failures right now? Uh, the top coating here on the bed that's uh, becoming a failure uh, because I've noticed when I'm printing, I don't know if you can see that, I'll see if I can zoom in for you here. Um, the print actually adheres too much to the top coating. Well, basically it's coming off the polypropylene bed, the coating itself. I uh, need to figure that out. Um, need to do some research on what will stick to polypropylene. Uh, the bed size doesn't account for this rubber seal. I just threw it in there just to make it fit need to trim her down a little bit in certain areas to make the bed fit a bit better. And the last thing that's been causing me um, uh, a lot of problems is the hot end over here. It literally jams every single print. I've done my fair share of troubleshooting on this and I haven't had a more finicky hot end. What it does is it melts too high and then it deforms the filament and uh, once it tries to refeed, once it's cool, um, it just can't get in there and push through it. And even this beast of an extruder uh, can't push that through because it's, you know. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and replace this hot end. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and hit that uh, subscribe button, hit that bell icon. I've got another work trip coming up, so I'll see you guys in the next one.